table saw is a workhorse of most shops. You spend a lot of time on the table saw for many parts of a different, or many different parts of a project. It can do a lot of different types of cutting and different, even joinery, but its, it's real purpose is to do two cuts very well. And one is a cross cut and the other is a rip cut. So a cross cut is when you're cutting across the short dimension of a piece of wood. And a rip cut is when you're cutting along the length of the wood. And the reason we differentiate between those two types of cuts on the saw like this is because you have to use two different fence systems in order to get the job done. So let's look at cross cutting first. It's the easier of these two. The cross cut fence, or miter fence as it's sometimes called, looks like this. Its job is to just push the wood through a cut while maintaining a specific angle. And you can see it rides in this slot on the saw, that's what it's indexing off of, and that's what keeps it running straight and at 90 degrees to the blade. So the process of doing a cross cut is pretty simple. You're just putting a piece of wood up against the cross cut fence and running it through the saw. A rip cut, on the other hand, you're using the rip fence. And that's what this is. The rip fence actually slides along this rail on the back of the saw, and it has a tape gauge on here which tells you the dimension that you're going to cut. And it's actually one of the only tape gauges in the entire workshop that I trust to be accurate. It's pretty much dead on. When you dial in a six inch cut on here and lock it, you're going to get six inches between the inside of this fence and the inside of this blade every time. So very reliable. Now, one thing to note about table saws is you should never ever use the two fences together. This creates a dangerous situation that can cause kickback. And what I'm talking about is this. If you're cross-cutting a piece of wood, you might be tempted to say, well, I'll use the rip fence to set my measurement. If I know I need a six inch piece, why not just set it on the rip fence and run my piece through the saw that way? What happens when you do that, though, is a dangerous thing. You're cutting the wood, and it's actually fine at the beginning of the cut, but when you get to the end of the cut and this piece of wood becomes separated from each other, you're still pushing this one forward. This one starts to tip and turn into the back of the blade. Now the back of the blade is coming out of the table with a lot of force and that piece of wood gets caught on the blade and kicks back at you. So if you're in that line, you're going to get a piece of wood in the head or the chest and it won't kill you, but it's very painful. Another thing about cross cutting is you always want to let one piece of the wood be free to move. Putting the rip fence out of the way is one way to allow that to happen, but you also don't want to hold the other piece as it's going through. So that's another safety thing with cross cutting. Always just hold one side of the piece of wood. The key to a good cross cut is holding the wood down onto the table and back into the fence to keep it securely indexed. So let's make this cut. Okay, pretty straightforward. Now you noticed I left this piece of wood against the blade as it was spinning. This piece is totally safe, it will never kick back at you. Totally fine to leave it there. Don't be tempted or feel compelled to move that while the saw blade's still running. There's no rush to get it out of the way. So we can shift this and do miter cuts. We can put this on a 45 degree and run it through. Many different ways to do cross cuts. But some of the other controls that you need to know on a table saw are how to adjust the height of the blade. All, most table saws also allow the blade to tilt 45 degrees to the left or right. And those things are important to understand too. So on the front of this saw, we've got a hand wheel that allows the blade height to be adjusted up and down. And if you turn it clockwise, the blade comes up. Counterclockwise, it goes down. The optimal table saw blade height that you're looking for is for the surface of the wood to cut one of these teeth, the top tooth, in half. You really only want the blade exposed as much as you need it to, to get the cut done. If the blade is up all the way, or even a little bit more, we're basically just making contact with the teeth at the beginning and at the end, but this whole time in the middle, we're just hitting bare metal. So, best to keep it low. Okay, the other control is on the left side of the saw, in my, in my saw, that allows the blade to tilt. Now to show this, I've gotta take this throat plate off see. I'll also raise the blade up so you can see this more clearly. But if you turn this hand wheel, the blade will start to tilt over to the left and it will go all the way over to 45 degrees. So you can do angled cuts on the cross cut, cutting through the wood, and you just have to make a, make a little block to measure that. 
angle or if you have a digital gauge, snaps right on the saw and as you rotate and tilt, it shows you the angle. All right, because the blade can tilt, one of the things you always want to check on a table saw is that the blade is actually at 90 degrees when you come up to the saw. If you're trying to make a 90 degree cut and it's a little bit off and you find out later, it can really screw up your project. So, have an engineer square handy and if you raise the blade up, you just push the square against the blade. Check and see if you see any light in there. If not, you're good to go. All right, let's move on to ripping now. Ripping involves making a cut down the length of a board. Because we are bound between the fence and the blade, it can create the dangerous situation um, that can cause kickback. And so there's a couple of techniques with ripping wood that you need to follow in order to prevent that from happening. And that's what I'm gonna show you. So the idea of ripping though, is that you're pressed up against the rip fence. This rip fence is what you're indexing off of to make your cut. So whatever is happening over here is gonna happen at the cut. So this edge has to be straight. There's no way to do this cut safely if that edge is not straight. So with that straight edge against the fence, we're gonna be pushing it against the fence and then getting it through this cut. In order to do that, you have to do a couple things with each hand. Your left hand is gonna be positioned up front, pushing into the fence and holding down. Your right hand is gonna be behind you, pushing the board forward. And, not, and eventually it's gonna push it through the opening between the blade and the fence. But this technique of holding the board against the fence while you're pushing is key to making kickback not happen. So let's, let me demonstrate this and you can see what I'm talking about. Position your hand about a hand's length back. Now a couple things happen there that may not strike you as obvious. One is your left hand always stays put. Don't be tempted to follow the wood because at some point you're just gonna be pushing this piece into the blade instead of into the fence. And then that doesn't do any good. The other thing is once this back edge reaches this hand, this hand can't really do anything good anymore. It really should just be taken out of the picture. And then all the work has to be done by the other hand. Now I'm using my hands to push this board through this opening. And when you're at six inches and greater, that's actually a more reliable and safe way to push wood through the table saw. If it gets smaller than that, you're going to want to use a push stick. And that's what this is. This is a homemade push stick. You can buy these pre-made, but it's easier just to make them. So if I have a narrower cut, let's say I'm, I'm cutting, I have cut this board. Anytime you get narrower than six inches, it becomes a little bit uncomfortable to get your hand through there and dangerous. So use a push stick. The way the push stick works, it has a notch cut out in the bottom to grab the back of the board, a nice long front to hold down, and a handle that puts your hand way above where the cutting is happening, and let and finish the job with that. Then you're just gonna push it all the way through. Make sure you clear the back of the blade. You never wanna leave wood in the blade like that because things can move around and vibrate and get caught in the back of the blade and kick back. So just keep it clear of the back of the blade and then you're done. But that's what the use of a push stick. Now push sticks also can come in different sizes. Here's a very thin one for doing extremely thin rip cuts. You can do rip cuts on my saw down to about a quarter inch, believe it or not. And that's what this is for, to fit through there and push wood through. You can see it's been hit by the blade, but that's what it's for. So better this than your, than your hand. Okay, that's it for the table saw. Those are the two basic cuts. Um, there's plenty more you can do by putting dado blades and other jigs that work on the table saw to expand its functionality. But those are the basics.